don't have very much time here because my uh, uh, my driver will be getting nervous and I'll have to be hurrying along. This, uh, I think, you know, his head appears so large, so I suppose I'd say it's an above average representation of a military uniform. But you could you could probably pass this for a normal man. This is from uh, an 1850 infantry sergeant of the United States military around the time of uh, Stephen Watts Kearney. And this is some excellent over overcrust throughout the uh, museum. We have some excellent uh, mounted uh, uh, bu uh, buffalo and uh, other wildlife heads. This is Black Hawk, a Sauk warrior chief, and uh, Keokuk, for whom my, my co-author Walt Cross for Strange Look at Custer Volume uh, 1 uh, would be very interested in be because, because of the town of Keokuk, which was uh, founded by, I believe, uh, Verling K. Hart, if I recall entirely correctly. Like I said, we don't have much time, but we'll try to get as much as we can from visiting the fort. Very interesting mannequin heads and Indian artifacts. The trip is well worth it, even, uh, I don't want to say more worth it than Little Bighorn because the sight and the feelings that you get there are so legendary. Uh, but definitely the artifacts on the exhibit and the way they're exhibited are very impressive. Right here you have, uh, if we zoom in close, and if you can get it within the shine, you got a silver dollar trade dollar. And this is the type of money you would have had at Little Bighorn uh, because it's uh, d dated 1873 to 1885. Just as you got the Liberty seated type. Uh, you know, uh, quite a number of this, if it's dated to the period or even still in production. Uh, uh, down here, you got the Liberty, he uh, Liberty Head Morgan dollar, which is a little later, just two years later. So my dad had quite a number of those. And then uh, we, we naturally have uh, is sold a quite a few, but I, ha I still have one from uh, when we were going through the foreclosure. Th this, this silver dollar right here, the trade dollar, as well as the half dollar Liberty Seated type. Those were pounded into earrings uh, when found by the Indians when they were looted from Custer's men. And uh, if you're looking for uh, Indian artifacts to feature uh, such an image, uh, you'll be looking for those types of coins or the ones pillaged from the Indians. Now up here, this is a very special uh, rifle because as I told Mark earlier, the very top rifle is the Remington Rolling Block, which Custer is believed to have been armed with at the Battle of Little Bighorn and died with five, uh, at least you know, five shells laying beneath his body, four or five shells laying beneath his body. So he definitely got off a few shots and is believed to have capped one warrior uh, directly between the eyes on a, on a hill uh, top uh, facing him uh, in the other direction away from where, uh, the, where, where it slopes down to the Yates area. As I say, I got limited time and I want to videotape the uh, Lewis, uh, Lewis Armistead exhibit before I leave, as well as maybe a better video for the Cardiff Giant. But I'm not sure if I'll get, get to that. Over here is a number of Native American artifacts, and despite this being the Fort Dodge Museum, they have a number of uh, exhibits from uh, the, like the Navajo and Southwestern Indians as well. And they made donuts <laughs> and uh, other bread. This is a, a, a little bowl for uh, beating their grain. and. Uh, very unusual little scary masks and they say ceremonial masks and I'm sure they're ceremonial but some of these were just made to freak people out that's why Custer referred to the Indian dress as grotesque and grotesque has a number of meanings uh, in including you know great and uh, and strange and unusual in its own way beautiful uh, so by some definition so it has good and bad applications but it's definitely imposing and great as in Grozny you know in Russian the Russian term these are animals I'm not sure exist anymore or if they do you know it, it's uh, pretty neat to see them in this exhibit these birds look very freaky if I could get a zoom in on this uh, not quite as imposing as if you see them up front Oh, down here is a woolly mammoth, a woolly mammoth horn. 
tusk, if you will, and a woolly mammoth tooth. And while I'm up here, I think I might as well revisit the car to fix it. Well, I was already there with Mark, so you guys got a good look at the giant and his great big penis. I'm going to swing over to the Lewis uh, Armistead exhibit real quick. And we're videotaping this for posterity. Mark told an interesting story about those pots over there, about a uh, an Indian woman. I like this moose. This is a happy moose. They always have this great camel smile. And uh, I'm not at the best angle to record this, but uh, hopefully I get them all in a good shot. So it's moving on now, while well, we still can, to the Lewis Armistead exhibit. And I really want to get this on videotape because this is some, this is a rather amazing exhibit that I was sure as hell not expecting when I came here. And uh, don't believe uh, over here is the Sutler shop. The Sutler shop is rather interesting. Not a not a whole lot to see in the settler shop list aside from the relatively well known and prominent tin cans and other necessary items and I would have expected a store owner to to be here but uh, you, we, we didn't see anyone pop out at, at us but the one the, the the one that really got my friend freaked out was this the original cabin of 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 the military fort established in 1850 and preserved by the Daughters of the American Revolution, Lewis A. Armistead Office. And if we zoom in here, we can get some of the writing. And you can pause the screen about there and read for yourself, or I'll read it later. Entering the door. And of course, directly, you are met with a life-size recreation of Louis A. Armistead staring right at you, greeting us in his rebel uniform. And then if you don't look around very, very quickly, you are surprised with yet another one uh, not behind glass. This really freaked out Mark when he was standing here. He would have been looking at this uh, Confederate general right here from behind. Then he takes a brief glance over here and then, oh look, there's this guy. <laughs> and this is a slightly younger version of him, albeit with more hair than I believe he ever had before or at this age, because on the the photograph at the wall, or, or uh, you, you clearly see that he is bald. And you see the stars and bars because he clearly fought for the South. He is a significant uh, military commander in Pickett's charge. I'm not sure because I haven't read about him yet, but he, he may have been killed in Pickett's charge. But we have yet to see, we have yet to see, and I don't have time to read this all, so we're gonna take quick snaps of all the uh, writing on the wall. This is a photograph of the sword and scabbard of Louis A. Arm Armistad. It's got a very neat wrist breaker. All along here, uh, you got beautiful art on him. And this is my favorite statue by far of, uh, of of what they depict here. If I could buy this as a exhibit myself, I, I would be most pleased. This little, uh, this popular depiction of a, of a, in this case, a Union soldier uh, giving, uh, giving uh, some, some aid and comfort to a, to a dying or wounded Confederate uh, so officer or soldier is a popular depiction uh, sometimes shown the other way around in, in uh, contemporary and uh, later art and if you look in at his face he looks a lot like George Armstrong Custer which I, which I thought was a neat uh, little, 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 little thing about him of course right down here more art more beautiful heart from me he apparently had his hat on his sword and ran it through or waved it around. And Pickett it was, of course, killed in Pickett's charge. Well, this Armistead fellow, I do not know, know or believe that he survived or not. And I still yet to read up on him. This is a magnificent painting. 
all around you see many paintings. Friend against friend, as is popularly depicted, great, great, ac great acts of mercy were shown to either, either side during the Civil War, and William McKinley joined the Masons specifically for the reason uh, of f for the acts of kindness shown by brother against to, to brother against brother when uh, held captive or found in. Uh, uh, great uh, distress bringing relief during the Civil War. So he liked that Masonic organization, chose to join one himself. I, of course, am not a big fan of it, but I can see the attraction to it by people like McKinley and him and others. So take one last look around. And this is quite possibly, by uh, as simple as it is, it's one of the best exhibits here at Fort Dodge. And I encourage all of you to come visit anytime shortly. This is the magnificent one, Jack Strange, aka Shenandoah C, heading out as my driver will undoubtedly be waiting for me. Till, till we meet again, farewell. <laughs>